In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to show you how I use Mylar with one or three lights for awesome in-camera studio lighting effects. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here, and I am always in search of new creative in-camera techniques. I love creative studio lighting, and I'm constantly scouring the internet for inspiration. And recently I came across a shot that looked like the subject was standing on a reflective surface, but almost like they were underwater, and I realized they were standing on Mylar. And so I put myself to the task of figuring out how I could use Mylar and hard light for creative in-camera technique. All right, so first of all, what is Mylar? Well, to be honest, I don't really know what it actually is, but it's basically a reflective piece of plastic. Uh, you can buy it in small pieces, you can buy big foldable sheets, or in the case I have here, I bought it in a large roll. Now, at first with this example, I laid the Mylar out on the floor and I hit it with a hard light, like a bare bulb. And it didn't really do much. In the inspiration shot I had seen, there were these beautiful reflections, almost like being underwater and it wasn't happening. And I realized it was because the Mylar was too smooth. So my next attempt at this technique, I went in and I crumpled up the Mylar because all the little different surfaces would give places for the light to reflect off of. And that's what gave me a little bit more of that underwater look. So before we get into it a little bit, let's actually take a look at the final shot. So you can see here that the Mylar on the floor is giving the look of a reflection of water, but then the way that the light is hitting it is also giving the texture of water in the background. Now, would you believe that this shot was done with one single strobe? Because it was, it only takes one light. The key is that it is a hard light. Now, before we take a look behind the scenes, I did want to let you know that if you like creative studio lighting, I actually have a guide and a class dedicated to it. If you visit learnwithlindsay.com, I have a creative studio lighting guide as well as classes on gel photography and old Hollywood lighting and so much more. So you'll definitely want to check those out. Now, let's pop over to the behind the scenes. All right, so in this behind the scenes, you see the Mylar on the floor. Uh, I was using a fashion gray background, so a neutral tone background. And then you see in the top left-hand corner, the single strobe, the hard light. Well, in this case, that hard light is something called a Fresnel. Now a Fresnel modifier is a lot like the light used in the top of a lighthouse. It's actually a big lens that concentrates the light and it gives you really hard, crisp, concentrated light. And so a Fresnel is very, very well known in old Hollywood lighting. Mole Richardson Fresnels and then the, the big light sources that create hard light across the scene, but just really smooth, smooth quality of light across the subject's skin. And so I love Fresnels and recently because I was working a lot with old Hollywood lighting and, and trying to achieve that aesthetic, I've been pulling my Fresnel out all the time. And so I decided to use it in this instance because I know it creates a hard quality of light. You could try this technique with a bare bulb or maybe try it with a grid or other hard light modifier like an optical spot. So in this case, I have the Fresnel on the left-hand side and I pointed it just in front of the subject on the Mylar. And the reason I did that is because when I pointed it at the subject herself, it became too overexposed, but pointing it at the Mylar in front of her actually reflected the light back onto her. And so you can see all the beautiful textures in the background. So you can see the Mylar, the fashion gray background. And by the way, the camera that I was using with the Canon R5 and the 24 to 70 2.8 lens. All right, so let's actually go over to the final image. You can see the original here. All right, so looking at the original, what is different between the final shot and the original? Well, first of all, uh, I cleaned up some of the issues with the Mylar. Like in the back, I had simply taped it down where it met the seamless paper and it kind of bowed up a little bit. So I, I fixed that crease. I cleaned up some of the edges. There was a seam where the Mylar had been folded before. I cloned that out, patch tooled that out. I lowered her shoulders. But I think one of the biggest things that I did was desaturate the image and put a little bit more light on her face. Now, I wanted to be able to achieve this with a single light. But what I noticed is that by bouncing the light in front of her, she was getting a little bit of bottom light and, and her, fight was, her face wasn't quite as bright as I wanted it to be. So all I really did is pull out some saturation and then I went in with a curves adjustment layer and brightened up and added some contrast to the face. And I think that really brings your attention to where it's supposed to be. I love this. I think that it's elegant. I love the tonalities of it. Like I, I love this shot. I love this technique. But I'm never satisfied. And so I was like, let's play around with gels. And so I wanted to see what I could do if I could add some kisses of color to the shot. So 
the next version of this setup, I used three lights instead of one. I still used the Fresnel in the exact same place, pointed at the ground in front of her. But then I added one gel behind her to light a little bit of the background in the top of her head, which you can kind of see, see that pink kissing over her head and a little bit in the background. And then I used in the foreground, a light with a blue gel, which you can see filling in the shadows in front of her. Now, a couple of things. Uh, this starts to get a little bit more advanced. And this photo was actually taken for my hands-on intensive workshop on advanced studio lighting. I did one of these earlier this year. And if you go to learnwithlindsay.com under events, you can find my intensive workshops and I have another one in the fall. This workshop is great because not only are you learning some of my favorite advanced and creative techniques, but you get to see it hands-on. So you can see how changes in the Fresnel will make a difference in the quality of light and how uh, adding, changing the gels, changing the modifier, changing the position, the height, all of that makes a difference. So in my advanced studio lighting, one light is nice for creativity, but it's also beneficial to see what happens when you add additional lights to the scene to control the background, to add a kiss of color, to fill in the shadows. And that's what you see in the result we have here. Now you'll also notice another difference between the first shot and this one. You can see that I used a star filter. Now I knew that I was going to be using hard light and the model had on a sparkly dress and these two things together would give me specular highlights. And specular highlights are exactly what you need for the star filter to, to do its thing, to work its magic. And that's why you see those bright reflections. So maybe you like it better with or without, but it's definitely fun to try. And it gives a lot more of a, a glam and fantasy feel in this second setup. Okay, now uh, let's actually take a look behind the scenes so you can see what we were working with in the three light setup. Okay, so first and foremost, as mentioned before, we have the Fresnel on the left-hand side pointed slightly in front of her. Now, if you understand gel photography, you know that gels show up most in shadow areas. And if you wanna learn more about this, take a look at my class, The Magic of Gels, which you can find on my educational site. Now, I knew that the shadows in this shot were in the front, of her as well as in the background. So I knew these two areas were just ripe for taking on some color. So first and foremost, in the front right-hand side of the frame, you see that I added a medium umbrella with diffusion, so basically a soft light source, and I added a blue gel. You can see that blue gel reflecting on the dress, basically anywhere that wasn't being hit by the main light. So that would be my fill light. And then I added another umbrella in this case, it was a large umbrella with diffusion behind the subject to act as a rim light and also fill in the background a little bit, give a kiss of color. And I chose a magenta gel. And so you can see that kissing across the background, lighting the top of the subject's form and her head. Now, a couple of things, right? You see the mylar still, still that fashion gray background, and then the same camera and uh, exposure as before. But let's pop over and see what we captured in camera. This shot, I did a little bit more work on. And the reason I did that is I took the photo and, and I had the, remember that backlight being magenta? I thought that the shot was looking a little too warm and that the, the image overall was kind of skewing kind of pink and warm tones. But the shot was really inspired by water and I wanted everything to be cooler and mysterious. So this is what I captured raw in camera, which is pretty close, uh, but I wanted something cooler. So what I did is I cooled down the white balance. I went to a tungsten white balance, really making things blue. But then it felt a little too blue, so I started to desaturate. And when I desaturated, this is the result that I got. So it's much more water and mysterious and cool. But then analyzing this, there are some things I want to clean up. Um, first of all, I'm running into the same problem as I did before with not quite as much light on her face as I'd want. If I brought her chin down and get a little bit more of the reflection, but with her chin up, I, it wasn't quite as bright. I also needed to clean up the edges of the mylar on the right. And then I thought her head was a little bit too close to the top of the frame. And so the final shot, here's what I ended up with. Brightened up her face, extended the frame to the top, cleaned up on the right. Uh, you'll also know that I kind of mirrored her chest, just the way she was laying. It wasn't symmetrical and I thought it was a little bit distracting. That was the only other change. So here's where we started, here's where we ended. And the reason I went this direction was because it was giving me that watery effect. Now you can see that this setup is a little bit more complicated and that's of course why it was part of my advanced studio lighting hands-on workshop. Now, if you'd like to see the gear used in the making of these images, be sure to check out the links in the description below and visit adorama.com. Now, if you'd like to see this hands-on, check out learnwithlindsay.com and visit my events section of my website. But if you'd like to see more of these photo deconstructions and breakdowns of my shoot, be sure to like and subscribe because here on YouTube, I have so many more of these videos coming your way. See you next time, guys.